Hi there everyone and welcome to this brand new life board video that aims to step you through the venous drainage of the appendicular skeleton. My name is Dr Nikki and welcome to my YouTube channel where I aim to break down complex concepts in easy ways using a drawing to learn approach. The specific objectives for this life board video are for you to revise the terminology used to describe the branches and the patterns of the course origin and termination when we're talking about veins of the body. And then finally, to step through the major deep veins of the upper and lower limb, as well as the superficial veins of the upper and lower limb, which are going to be really important from a clinical practice standpoint. I want us to then move on to the venous drainage then of the lower limb. So once again, we're going to start with the foot and we're going to work our way up. Most of the blood from the deep aspects of the foot are going to drain via the dorsal and plantar digital veins into a deep plantar arch. And this is located on the plantar surface or the underside of the foot. The deep plantar venous arch is going to terminate at the level of the medial and the lateral malleoli as the lateral and medial plantar veins. Our lateral and medial plantar veins are going to then confluence together to form the posterior tibial veins. Once again, this is going to be a set of venae comitantes that are coursing with the posterior tibial artery, draining and supplying blood to that posterior compartment of the leg. A major tributary then of the posterior tibial vein is going to be the fibular veins. And the fibular veins are then going to drain blood from that lateral compartment of the leg and originate too from a confluence of the medial and the lateral plantar veins. Finally, similar to the arterial supply, the dorsalis pedis artery is also then surrounded by venae comitantes that will then continue as the anterior tibial vein until we reach that proximal level of the interosseous membrane and the anterior tibial vein and posterior tibial vein are going to confluence together in the region of the knee. Roughly between five to seven centimeters within the popliteal fossa, we then see that confluence of the anterior and the posterior tibial veins to then form the popliteal vein. The popliteal vein is going to course through the fossa. It courses through the adductor hiatus within the adductor magnus muscle, and it's then going to pop out anteriorly. As it then comes out anteriorly, it then continues into the femoral vein. The femoral vein, particularly in that femoral triangle of the thigh, is going to receive a couple of tributaries. Specifically, it's going to receive venous blood from the medial and lateral circumflex veins that drain the proximal aspects of the head of the femur as well as the hip joint. It is also going to receive blood contributions from the deep femoral or the profundus femoral veins that are going to be via perforating veins. This all occurs within the femoral triangle. The termination then of the femoral vein is going to be a continuation as the external iliac vein as soon as it passes the level of the inguinal ligament or the inguinal canal. Our 
our external iliac vein is then going to continue as the common iliac vein as it courses over that iliac fossa and receives the internal iliac vein as a tributary branch. So you should be able to recall that the internal iliac vein is going to then drain blood from the internal organs of the pelvis, so the pelvic viscera, as well as the external genitalia and the perineum, for example. So you can see that I've drawn on the deep veins of the lower extremity in orange. What I'd like us to also consider is a condition known as deep vein thrombosis. And deep vein thrombosis, or DVT, is most commonly going to originate in the popliteal vein. If we're thinking then about how a particular thrombus may actually then travel, we can see that it's then going to course through that adductor hiatus into the femoral vein, and it's usually within the femoral vein or the external iliac vein that we see an embolus break off that is then going to travel or make its way back up into the heart and could then get lodged in the lungs to then create a pulmonary embolism. DVT also most commonly is going to occur in the deep veins of the lower limb due to the effects of gravity. You will also remember within the venous system that we have venous valves within the veins. And because of the effects of gravity, we then have that musculovenous pump that is created by the adjacent muscles. So when the muscles contract, the valves are going to open and blood is then going to be pushed up. And once the contraction stops, the valves then close. So this then brings us to a really important concept that is then referred to as varicose veins. And varicose veins will commonly originate in the superficial veins of the lower limb. So let's think about where do we find those superficial veins and where do they originate? So you should know by now that superficial veins are going to be coursing through that subcutaneous space, which in the lower limb is referred to as the dorsal venous arch. And this is located on that dorsal aspect or the anterior aspect of the foot. The termination of the dorsal venous arch is going to be as the medial and the lateral marginal veins that are coursing along those longitudinal arches of the foot. These are super important because the two major superficial veins of the lower limb are going to originate from our marginal veins. So specifically, if we're considering the medial marginal vein, this will continue as soon as we pass the level of the medial malleolus as the great or long saphenous vein. The great saphenous vein is going to course all the way up the medial aspect of the leg and the thigh to then act as a tributary, so draining into the femoral vein at the femoral triangle. Our great saphenous vein is kind of cool because it contains between 10 to 20 venous valves and it also has a series of perforating veins that at various points are going to allow blood to drain back into the deep veins such as the femoral vein, popliteal and the posterior tibial veins. Originating then from the lateral marginal vein above the level of the lateral malleolus we then have the short or small saphenous vein. This is going to be a lot shorter in its course, as the name suggests, and it is going to course along the posterior aspect of the leg and then drain in the popliteal fossa as a tributary of the popliteal vein. Varicose veins are usually going to occur when there is a defect in the venous valves within our superficial vessels, such as the great or small saphenous veins. 
And if there is going to be stretching, for instance, of the valve, you can imagine that due to the effects of gravity and the contributions of that muscular venous pump, we are going to see a pooling of blood distally into that superficial vein. Eventually, the pressure is going to become so great that it causes the vein to become tortuous or twisted. Because of the fact that we have perforating veins that allow communication or flow from that superficial back into the deep veins, it also means that if varicose veins are severe enough, it can cause backflow via those collateral veins, then into our deep veins of the leg. If you imagine if you're standing for long periods of time with weight bearing and the effects of gravity, blood is then subsequently going to pull into the distal aspects of those extremities and into the foot and lead to a condition referred to as chronic venous insufficiency. I hope that this gives you an overview then of the venous drainage, the origin, the termination and the course of both the deep and superficial veins of the appendicular skeleton. If you are still struggling then with the arterial supply of the body, please make sure that you watch my other YouTube videos that segregate the arteries of the upper and the lower limb, as well as the blood supply to the pelvis. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you for watching. And please make sure that you reach out if you have any questions or requests for other Lightboard videos.